Fuel design is central to how a reactor operates. There are three main fuel forms that are used in different nuclear reactor designs. Oxides, carbides, and metals. Oxides are the most common fuel form. They involve fissionable material chemically bound to oxygen. This is typically uranium dioxide, also known as UOX. Alternatively, this can be plutonium dioxide or some mixture between UO2 and PuO2, also known as a mixed oxide fuel form, or MOX. Thorium-based fuels are thorium dioxide or thorox. UOX has the following advantages. It has a high melting point of approximately 2,900 degrees Celsius, it's a ceramic, which makes it relatively chemically inert with respect to the coolant, cladding, and other structural materials in the reactor, and it has a very small thermal co expansion coefficient. UOX has the following disadvantages. It will crack and fracture from fission product pressure. It will swell from these cracks and cause pressure on the cladding, and the higher fluences will yield worse cracking and higher pressures. As seen here, a fuel pellet is a small cylinder with a radius of about 0.7 centimeters and a height of about 1 centimeter. Pellets will begin to crack and demonstrate larger grain growths as the fuel is irradiated. This figure shows the pellet evolution as a function of the burn. A fuel rod is made up of many fuel pellets stacked axially on top of one another inside a column of cladding, as can be seen in this figure here. Fuel rods have about 3.6 meters of fuel length and are approximately 10 to 15 millimeters in diameter. They have a linear heat rate between 18 and 23 kilowatts per meter and have a zircaloy cladding, which is a zirconium-based steel. Carbide fuels, on the other hand, are small spheres or microbeads of fuel surrounded by silicon carbide and or pyrolytic carbon. The most common design for carbide fuels is called triso, named after the number of layers, as can be seen here. There is an inner core that represents the fuel, and then surrounding that there is a graphite buffer, surrounding that is a pyrolytic carbon layer, and then there's a silicon carbide layer, and finally another protective pyrolytic carbon layer. These microbeads are embedded in larger tennis or golf ball sized spheres of carbon. As we can see here, you can fit many, many of the microbeads inside of a single golf ball sized sphere. An advantage of triso and other carbide fuels is that they keep the fission products trapped within the fuel region that's at the center of all of the microbeads. They are also very difficult to reprocess and to recover the used fuel from. This makes them proliferation resistant. This fuel form is very thermally stable and may be used in high temperature gas cooled reactors, which can theoretically obtain operating temperatures of 1100 degrees C or higher. Finally, metal fuels use the metallic form of the fissile material directly as a fuel. This has desirable heat transfer properties, but can be subject to metal fatigue. Some fast breeder reactors use metal fuels because the temperatures are very hot, and it is easier to perform pyroprocessing on used metal fuel, allowing the fast burner reactors to do inline reprocessing. When a normal reactor shuts down for refueling, only about one-third to one-quarter of the core is permanently discharged. The other two-thirds to three-quarters goes back into the core. This is a process known as batching. Batching is a method of obtaining more energy out of the fuel and of reaching higher burn-ups. Typically, less burned assemblies with higher reactivities are placed in the outer regions of the core, while more burned assemblies with lower reactivities are placed closer to the center of the core. Here we see an example fuel assembly shuffling pattern, 
where the green and orange boxes represent new fresh fuel that goes in to replace what was permanently discharged. Fuel is shuffled around each refueling. With hundreds of assemblies, this is why a refueling process can take a month of around-the-clock work to complete. 